It's not too far away till you've got to open the show. How are you feeling? Very nervous and very excited. How would you describe the show? Um, no, oh, it's about an hour and a half of sheer energy, um, just exhilaration. I mean, we just run from one routine to the next. Birchmore personally led the pitch to stage the first show in the venue. She is also responsible for the concept. They uh, decided to go with a totally Australian package and I didn't know when I first submitted the idea that um, that was the one hook that uh, was going to prove to be the one that we got it on rather than uh, bringing, uh, they had lots of options to bring in shows from Asia and throughout the world, Nax. Um, I said, here I am, I can give you 20 fabulous dancers, better than you'd, or as good as anywhere you'd find in the world and uh, along with band and creative team, let's do it. And um, they're all doing real good, <laughs> real good. The team behind Rhonda is a who's who of Australian entertainment. Richard Werrett, the man who's directed such hits as Jesus Christ Superstar, is directing this show. Brian Thompson designed the sets for the current Broadway production of The King and I. He won a Tony Award for his work. Red Hot and Rhonda is his latest project. Christopher Essex designed the clothes for Strictly Ballroom, a perfect precursor for his work on this show. Some of the songs are inspired by the great movie musicals, which is a good thing for Rhonda, as she's just signed a deal to star in a new stage version of this classic, Easter Parade. The movie star Judy Garland, Fred Astaire and Anne Miller and also features songs from Irving Berlin. Rhonda will take the Anne Miller role. Taking the blues away, unhappy news away. If you were blue it's easy to shake off your cares and troubles. It's ironic that Rhonda later worked with Anne on the West End in London in Sugar Babies. And now it's a role that Ms Miller created about 50 years ago which will see Rhonda reach the ultimate for performers, Broadway. This is a dream that I had as every performer, I think, anywhere is the ultimate to perform Broadway. And more uniquely is that the role is being tailor written for me. The new version of Easter Parade will see Rhonda's role greatly extended from the original. Potentially this Broadway thing is going to lead to a huge career in the States. Is, oh. is that something you think about? Not at all. I, uh, I've got a daughter and a husband who's very secure in his work. Um, I'm seeing this as um, like a, a one-off. I'm sure if these things happen we'll, we'll kind of uh, work them out when they, when they arise. <laughs> Birchmore will be a permanent feature at the showroom for most of 1997 and will relocate to New York for a projected Easter opening on Broadway in 1998. Someone's looking after me at the minute. Can you believe all this? No, no, and seeing those big posters of old Red Hot and Ruder around town, ooh, ooh. Well, what do you nice. think when you walk in and there's that huge poster of you? Well, there's going to be a bigger one on the bridge. It's, um... It's scary. It's really scary. Um, I don't see it as me. I'm not usually quite that glamorous. <laughs> no, look at me sitting <laughs> in my dressing room. Like this. No, uh, it's, it's pretty overwhelming. And um, I just hope we... Uh, I'm just so glad that they've gone as a going back to a, an Aussie with total Aussie package behind us rather than getting in someone else to do what we can do here.
The new Crow Casino is expected to attract more than 40,000 people a day. Good news for Crown, as Alex Tani reports, other city businesses are getting a touch of nerves about the new competition. We are nervous. I am nervous. It's being talked about as a showdown. The city versus the casino. With Crown's complex opening, the city's traditional fashion, food and entertainment strips face an unprecedented challenge. From the designer boutiques on Collins Street to the nightclubs on King, businesses are expecting to lose customers to the novelty and glamour of the casino. King Street restaurant owner Michael Kedamani. I'm not looking forward to uh, some of the competition the casino can give us, as in advantages, as in uh, you know, bigger complex, more, more variety of food. Plus, uh, plus the facilities, the, the, the parking, the things like that are going to sort of be hard for us to compete. 40 new restaurants in the uh, precinct, that's pretty stiff competition. They say they're going to get 40,000 people to the door every day, so where, where are they going to come from? <laughs> they are going to create 40,000 strangers, uh, so during the day it's going to be the, male, the people in the area. The City Council commissioned an independent report that states what areas of Melbourne will be the winners and losers now the casino's opened. It predicts the winners will be Chinatown and the Central City, the losers, Ligon Street, King Street and Southgate. But Southgate restaurant owners like Andrew Blake dispute the report, saying Southgate will retain its clientele. My market's very much middle Melbourne. They think they're going to all of a sudden uh, attract middle Melbourne, and I really have uh, doubts about that. So why did you decide against having a restaurant at the casino? I have uh, a moral uh, uh, sort of doubt about uh, myself. I was offered a site there. I had a, a look, but it was more of a, a sticky beak than a serious look. And um, I have a, a, a sort of a real problem with the casino and the casino culture, so I couldn't morally go in there. Southgate's boutique owners are thinking positive, believing the stores at the casino are not direct competition. Not at all. The dollar value of all the items over there are way above what most Melbournians can spend. It's great and it'll look fantastic and it's, um, it's a good image, but I mean, you and I can't buy things like that. But Ron Tomlinson from the Retail Traders Association says the casino will impact badly on Southgate's businesses. I think that has really the potential to pull a lot of people away from Southgate, which would be very unfortunate. Although the casino houses 35 restaurants, Christine Howe from the Southgate's Red Emperor restaurant remains confident. Well, everyone's entitled to their own opinions, but I believe that we should stay optimistic. I hope they're right, but uh, I'm not sure they are. But King Street nightclub owners like Con Giorgio fear they might feel the casino's bite. Everybody's going to go at the, uh, at the beginning to have a look. Um, I think the, uh, the people of Melbourne will uh, go and have a look at the casino, but uh, there's been some media reports about uh, Ligon Street will be losers and, and what have you. But I think at the end it's going to be up to the people of Melbourne to decide uh, if they still want Ligon Street there, um, Chapel Street, uh, King Street. It's basically up to the people of Melbourne. Well, the sound you're hearing now in the background is part of the multi-million dollar fireworks display. We're told it's one of the biggest to have ever been staged in the Southern Hemisphere. And in terms of Melbourne, it's about five times the size of the Sky Show fireworks at Albert Park. So sit back and enjoy the light show and we'll be back with more in a moment. certainly spectacular. And Crown is Australia's biggest casino and it borrows much from the legendary gambler's paradise Las Vegas. In particular from Steve Wynn, the multi-billionaire American casino king who helped Lloyd Williams achieve his vision. Brad 
like the city gonna set my soul, gonna set my soul on fire. When you think of casinos and gambling, Las Vegas, Nevada is the world's capital. It's a place where nothing exceeds like excess. Breakfasts are cheap and the gambling houses are very expensive. The inspiration for Melbourne's multi-million dollar complex came from Vegas and in particular Steve Wynn, a man who operates some of the most successful casinos in town. Casinos like the Mirage. This 160 metre high volcano erupts around every 15 minutes. Along with all the pyrotechnics, it sends out a smell of pina colada. The original sulphur smell was making too many guests feel sick. It works as an attention-getting beacon, a concept not lost on the people at Crown. Inside, superstar magicians Siegfried and Roy and their white tigers do eight shows a week. You can stay at the 3,000-room hotel, which has more surprises inside. There's 1,000 fish in there, and there's 53 different species. Is there a reason why it's here? Yeah, it calms the guests down. When you're checking in and you're waiting in line for check-in, it relaxes the guests. It also relaxes the employees also, and I'm one of them. <laughs> Just beyond the check-in area is a rainforest that doubles as a foyer, as you can head to the 2,245 slot machines inside. Outside, the aquatic theme continues with a special home for six Atlantic bottlenose dolphins. The Mirage is just one example of how casinos have changed in the USA. They are now entertainment complexes that cater for families. Another fact that has not escaped Lloyd Williams. I think what Crown will do for Melbourne is that it will create now for Melbourne an urban entertainment precinct and it will be the catalyst for major tourism to Melbourne. It's a strategy that works in Vegas. The town is home to 1.5 million people, but it plays host to 29 million visitors each year. An impressive feat, all the proprietors at Crown are banking on can be achieved here, albeit on a smaller scale. Tonight's opening has realized a long-held dream of Crown boss Lloyd Williams the man who's been the driving force behind Australia's biggest casino. Despite last-minute preparations, he took time out to speak with Richard Fitzgerald about his vision. Give us an idea of what it's like the last, let's say, three years. Well, you know, you have, you have some serious highs and lows, uh, but you've got to, you know, have that de dedication to keep going with it. What keeps you going through those down periods? Oh, because I wanted to achieve it. You know, uh, we, I was striving to, to build so we, you know, we were given the opportunity to create this here in Melbourne, uh, and I wanted to create something in Melbourne. I was born in Melbourne. I wanted to make it the best. Well, then what have you created for Melbourne, do you think? Oh, I think we've created a really major entertainment precinct for Melbourne, and, and we've, we've done the final infill of South Bank which I think is very significant as far as Melbourne's concerned. And uh, now we've got a tourism icon that we can actually bring people to Melbourne and say that we have got the best hotel in Australasia. What do you say to the detractors on a night like tonight? Well, you know, there's always going to be detractors. You know, the, this, is a, this is a country that wants to knock everyone. You know, I, I uh, happen to believe in being positive. I, I don't really worry about the detractors. Uh, you know, uh, I pick up the Melbourne Age and I don't read it. You know, you have to be positive. And I just think that, you know, there's a great opportunity in Australia to do things and, uh, and get on and do them. Well, the people who say that it's going to be a detraction to Melbourne, the CBD area, what do you say to them? Well, you see, I'm, I'm absolutely, I've got a contrary view to that. You know, I think that this is going to be the catalyst to bring people back into the CBD. You know, I think that Southgate was the start of it, and, South, and everyone knows how popular Southgate is. I think that this will be the, the, the major catalyst to actually bring people back into the city. You can see with people in a city living, that people are coming back into the city. I think, it, I think Melbourne's going to follow a worldwide trend, and I think the CBD is going to prosper. It's up to the, the people in the CBD uh, the retailers, the restaurateurs, to actually do something about their own case. But providing they do it, uh, I think the CBD is going to prosper. When you walk around this amazing complex, what do you think and what do you feel? Oh, it's a pretty, it's a, it's a big adrenaline rush for me, uh, walking around here, you know. Uh, 
you know, when you're as passionate about it as I am, uh, you know, it, it's a tremendous adrenaline rush. Last question, what now? What do you do now? Well, what we do now is that we've got 8,000 young staff here, average age 26. Uh, you know, we're up and making sure that we are the best. Uh, you know, the, the, the best thing for me as far as this whole complex is concerned when I see the young staff around here. You know, we've created a lot of jobs here, but they're a terrific bunch of young people, and that's, that's the exciting thing for me. A few nights with a bit more sleep, maybe. Yeah. Okay, congratulations. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Okay. The best things in life are free. Well, that's all we have time for tonight. I hope you've enjoyed this special edition of Today Tonight as Melbourne made history with the opening of the multi-billion dollar Crown Casino. We look forward to your company again tomorrow night. Until then, from all the team, take care and good night.